Jello in those six delicious flavors. Jello puddings for old fashioned homemade goodness bring you baby snooks. Yes, it's the Baby Snook Show, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks, with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and yours truly, Hedda Hopper, and brought to you each week by Jello and Jello Puddings. <coughs> well, I guess I don't have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that last night was Halloween. I don't know what you did, but here's what happened in the Higgins home. The family was just finishing dinner. <coughs> Mommy? Please, can I go? No, you may not. Snooks, I've told you a dozen <coughs> times you can't go out tonight. But it's Halloween. I know it. That's why you're staying home, so you can't get into any trouble. But all the kids will be out. Snooks, you heard your mother. The subject is closed. Can we open it up just a tiny little bit? No, no. Why? Uh, tonight of all nights, I want you to spend a quiet evening here in the house. Why? <laughs> because there's a doctor coming at nine o'clock and he's going to examine me for insurance. Do you think you'll find any? <laughs> Very funny. More chocolate cake, Lancelot? Oh, no, thanks, dear. Uh, not with the doctor coming. At my age, it doesn't pay to stuff oneself. I want some chocolate cake. Snooks, you've had three pieces. Do you really want some more? Yeah, at my age, it really don't make no difference. Yeah, I think I'll go in the other room and lie down. I've had a hard day and I'd like to relax a little before the doctor gets here. Go ahead, dear, and I'll clear off the table. Uh, boy, that couch looks good. Daddy? <laughs> what is it? If I promise to stay in front of the house? No. Please? No. Mm. Now please leave me alone. I'm going to take a nap. But it's Halloween outside. It's Halloween inside, too. Mm. And you won't get into any trouble. Mm. Now, I want no further discussion on the subject. Oh, yes, this couch is the best buy I ever did. <laughs> I could sleep for a week if my nerves would just let go. I hope it doesn't show up in my blood pressure. Ah. Oh, oh. <laughs> What's the big idea, Snooks? I put on my Halloween mask, ain't it, Purdy? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> and now, will you just go away and let me sleep. The doctor is going to be here in an hour. Perhaps you don't understand how important this is. Perhaps I don't. Well, it's not for myself that I'm doing this. It's for you and the family. Insurance is protection. If anything happens to me, you'll get a lot of money. How much? Oh, maybe $10,000. Daddy? What? Can I have a dime in advance? No, you've already had your allowance this week. I'll give it back the dime. When? When I get the $10,000. <laughs> Snooks, I don't think you know what you're saying. You only collect insurance when something happens what to the happen? insured. What could happen? Well, hundreds of things. And there's a different type of policy for each one of them. Uh-huh. Well, there's life, health, accident. Why, you could even insure your finger. My little finger? Yes. Suppose you lost your finger. <laughs> How can I lose it? It's stuck on me. <laughs> I didn't mean you'd leave it lying around somewhere. But suppose you accidentally cut off your finger. What would happen? I could only count up to nine. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you could collect on it. Let's say it's my finger. Yeah. If it should happen to get cut off, the company would pay $1,000. $1,000 for your little finger? Yes, sir. Let's cut it off. Oh, snooks. Oh, please go away and let me sleep. My blood pressure is bad enough. Can't the doctor fix it, Daddy? Well, this doctor isn't coming here to fix things. He's coming to look me over. Whatever he finds wrong, he'll report to the company. I don't like that doctor. Why not? He's a snitch. <laughs> He's not a snitch. He is too. He's a dirty old, mean old, dirty old snitch. Oh, Snooks, for the love of heaven, leave me alone. Go away. Mm, where? Anywhere. All right, I'll go outside. No, no, you don't. Go someplace else, in the house. I'm trying to take a nap. I want to take a nap. Well, now that is a good idea. Yeah? 
Yeah, supposing you run up to your bedroom and lie down. No, I want to lie next to you on the couch. Uh, you can't. I want to lie next to you on the couch. Okay, all right, all right. I suppose it's the only way I can get some rest. Uh, come on, lie here next to Daddy and go to sleep. All right. Good night, little Daddy. Good night. Daddy? Yes? I think I got insomnia. <laughs> well... Just lie there quietly, and don't disturb me. All right. Daddy? What is it? What's insomnia? Oh, listen, Snooks. If you can't fall asleep, count sheep. Little woolly sheep? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. With big brown eyes? Yes, yes. I don't yes. like sheep. Uh, well, uh, count kangaroos jumping over a fence. <laughs> I like kangaroos better. Oh, good. <sighs> Eleven... Well, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 24, 25. Okay, all right, all right, let's have it. What happened to 14, 19, and 23? They tripped. Oh. That settles it, Snooks. If I hear one more peep out of you, I'm going to take my belt off, and you know what'll happen then. Mm hmm. Your pants are going to fall down. <laughs> no, I'll give you a tanning. That's what. Now, either you let me take my nap, or you suffer the consequences. But, Daddy... Not a sound. But, Daddy, I just... Ah, oh, you heard me. <clears throat> Don't even open your mouth. I could get more rest in a boiler factory. Oh, just to close my eyes for 15 minutes. Oh, for Pete's sake. I didn't do it. Well, go see who it is. All right. Hi, Snooks. Oh, hi, Phoebe. Can you come out for Halloween? Shh, not so loud, Phoebe. My daddy's asleep on the sofa. But all the kids are outside. Why don't you ask him? I did ask him, and he won't let me. Shall I ask him? No, you'll wake him up. Can't you see he's asleep? Well, what's he doing sleeping so early? He's waiting for a man to come to see him. About what? About cutting off his little finger. Well, gee, he don't snore like my daddy does. Oh, sometimes he snores. Sometimes he even whistles. Oh, does he talk in his sleep too? Yeah, does yours? No, that's what makes my mother so mad. He just mumbles. Poor, tired little old daddy. Don't he look pretty sleeping on the couch? Yeah, I guess we better not wake him up. No, I wouldn't wake him up. I wouldn't wake him up for all the money in the whole world. No, for goodness sakes, I give up. Did you have a nice little rest, daddy? Oh, yeah, great. With you two kids jabbering in my ears. Phoebe wanted me to wake you up, but I wouldn't do it. <gasps> well, I just wanted to know if Schnooks could come out, Mr. Higgins. It's Halloween. All right, all right, all right. Go ahead, shoo. Both of you, get out of the house. Come on, Schnooks, before he changes his mind. All right, bye, Daddy. Oh, I should have done that hours ago. Maybe I'd have gotten some rest. Now I'm so wide awake and my nerves are screaming. Lancelot, was that you yelling? Oh, yes. My my defenses just, just collapsed. I held out as long as I could, but I'm only human. What do you mean? I let Snooks go out. Oh, well, it is Halloween after all. Maybe it's for the best. It's not for the best. Every Halloween is the same thing. Life and property aren't worth two cents with those kids chasing around in the streets. Well, what do you plan to do about it? Eliminate the holiday? No, but I can teach our daughter a lesson. You see this mask I'm wearing? Oh, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Great. Well, maybe the mask isn't so bad, but when I put these false tusks <gasps> on... Oh, Lancelot, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, pretty frightening, isn't it? Well, you wait here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Where are you going? Out to teach those kids a lesson. I'll give them a scare they'll never want to go out on Halloween again. <laughs> Schnooks, whose doorbell shall we ring first? Let's ring the 
this one right here. Okay, put on your mask and I'll sit on my broom. Go ahead, ring it. I did, someone's coming. <gasps> Trick or treat! Trick or treat! Well, well, if it isn't two little goblins on my doorstep. Hello, Mrs. Wilcox. What's this trick or treat business? Well, you gotta treat us to something or we'll play a trick on you. Yeah! You know, I sort of suspected this might happen tonight. So I've got a treat all ready for you. Come on inside. Here it is, kids, right on the table. Oh boy, orange jello. With cream. And little pieces of fruit inside. Oh, that's a jello Halloween special. <laughs> Snooks, that looks like a dish of sunshine all dressed up, doesn't it? And just taste that wonderful flavor. But hey, don't eat so fast. That's the famous locked in jello flavor, you know. Sealed in by a special process so it's safe and sound till your first big spoonful. Makes you think of the real ripe fruit, doesn't it? Mmm, doesn't it? You know, I can't think of a thing I like better than a dish of jello. Can you? Yeah, another dish. <laughs> well, I'm afraid that'll have to do for now. When the sugar shortage is over and there's lots of jello again, you come around and I'll give you six dishes. One of each of the six delicious jello flavors. Strawberry, raspberry, <laughs> cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. How's that? Oh boy! Now, if you two goblins have finished goblin, just put a mark on my door and leave me alone for the rest of the night, okay? Oh, uh, thank you, Mrs. Wilcox. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, kids. Happy Halloween. Well, who's next? Let's try the house on the corner. Okay, come on. Hello, Snooks. Well, hello, Phoebe. Who are you? Well, I'm Renette. Oh. Didn't you know? You didn't recognize me with this Halloween on my head, that pumpkin. Gee, is that a real pumpkin? Oh, sure. Ain't it uncomfortable? Well, it, it, it was when I had the candles burning, but uh, it's better now that I put out the candles. Come on, let's go down to the drugstore and see what we could get. Yeah! Swell! Wait a, wait, wait a minute. What's the matter? I, I, I saw something behind that tree. <gasps> it looks like a man. No, he's an animal. He's got big... Long teeth sticking out of its mouth. Oh, I'm scared. Here it comes. Run for your life. <laughs> Little children should be home in bed. <laughs> yeah, that ought to scare them. Hey, what's the big idea, bud? Huh? Haven't you got anything better to do than go around scaring kids? Look, friend, I suggest you mind your own business. One of those kids happens to be my daughter. Well, one of those kids happens to be my daughter. And I don't like any overgrown ape with false tusks running around scaring her. I, I did it for their own good. Every Halloween, those kids go out and get into trouble. Besides, I don't like your attitude. Oh, you don't, huh? No. Say that again. I don't like your attitude. Ugh! 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 Next time, try scaring somebody your own size. So long. Oh. oh, what's this? Oh, my teeth. Oh, it's only the false teeth. Daddy, hello. What are you lying in the gutter for? I, uh, I tripped and fell down. Gee, that's funny. Uh, what's funny about it? You must have tripped just when that man hit you. Yeah. You tell me something. Who was that man? Oh, that was Mr. Hopkins, Ronette's father. Well, where does he live? Oh, right on the corner. Why? Uh, never mind. Come on. Any man who punches your father does so at his own risk. Well, why didn't you suck him back? Well, uh, because I've got a brain in my head, that's why. Suppose I did punch him back. With the tremendous power I generate, I could easily have broken my hand. The nine chances out of ten... The hand wouldn't have fields straight. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, there I am, faced with the prospect of never playing the piano again. Oh, but, Daddy. What? 
You don't even know how to play the piano. <laughs> well, mind your own business and pick up that rock. All right. Here. What are you writing? Oh, just a little note. A little note? Yes, I'm going to throw a scare into that bully. Now, do you see that window in a Hopkins living room? Uh-huh. The one that's open? Yeah. <laughs> well, I take the rock thusly, and I attach the note with a rubber band thusly, and I draw my arm back thusly, and with uncanny accuracy, I toss it through the open living room window. <laughs> thusly. Oh, I guess my aim isn't what it used to be. Uh, come on, let's, let's get home. Yeah, uh, uh, don't say anything about it to your mother. Uh, well, come on. We'll just sit in the living room as, as though nothing has happened. What did it say, Daddy? What? The note you tied to the rock. Oh, I just thought I'd worry him a bit. He won't figure out that one in a hurry. All the note said was, guess who? <laughs> That's a good one, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty clever. <laughs> what was that? It's a rock. It came through the window, and there's a note on it. What does the note say? It says, who? Aha. Uh -huh. So he wants to play, does he? Can three play? Well, two can play the game. Can three play? Yeah, come on. Lancelot, what happened? What was that? Good heavens, who broke our window? Uh, vandals, vandals. They're irresponsible hoodlums. A law-abiding citizen like me... Hasn't got a chance on Halloween. Where are you going? Out. We're going out to chase them away. Let's go, schnooks. Okay. Quiet now, schnooks. Inch your way forward a little. Daddy. What? I'm tired of crawling on my stomach. Uh, well... This is the way they do it in the army. If you don't want to be seen, you crawl forward on your stomach. Yeah, but not down the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> well, the idea is that we don't want him to see us from his house. What are we going to do? I don't know yet, but... Oh, wait. <laughs> I've got it. You see this gate here? Mm -hmm. mm. And you see the garage over there? Yeah. <laughs> Well, if Mr. Hopkins wants to use this gate tomorrow morning, he's going to have to climb up on the garage to do it. You're so smart, Daddy. <laughs> you can say that again. You're so smart? Uh, never mind. Never mind. Let's get off and get to work. Sweet home. Gee, that gate looked funny up on top of the garage. <laughs> it did, didn't it? <laughs> uh, but I don't want you to get the wrong idea from all this. Mm -hmm. Certain things are merely mischievous pranks. Others have a purpose behind them. You understand? No. Well, let's put it this way. Your daddy has never been a believer in the policy of appeasement. Neither have I. That's the way I like to hear you talk. What does appeasement mean? Well, when somebody strikes you and you don't strike back, that's appeasement. Why do you like that? What? I've been appeasing you and Mommy for years. <laughs> uh, uh, well, off to bed with you, Snooks. After that gate episode... I don't think we're going to hear from Mr. Hopkins again tonight. I want to stay up and see what else happens next. No, you go rest your pretty little head. My pretty little head? Well, your little head. Nothing's going to happen next. Our friend Mr. Hopkins, I believe, has shot his bolt. Did you hear something, Snooks? Yeah. What was it? I don't know. Uh, the window seemed to be okay. Yeah. Oh, that must be the doctor. Go answer the door, Snooks. All right. I can't answer the door, Daddy. Well, why not? There's no door to answer. 
What? No door? It's gone! Oh, that does it. He wants trouble? All right. He'll get all he's looking for. I've got it. A brilliant idea. Run in the kitchen, Snooks, and get some hamburger, a pail of water, and your mother's flat iron. What are you going to do with it? No, don't ask questions. Just get them. All right. Now, before I pay a visit to Mr. Hopkins, I'm going to prepare a little reception for him in case he returns. First, this rope stretched across the front stoop, and then up over the trellis. Hurry up, Snooks. I'm coming, Daddy. And now another rope stretched this way. Here you are, Daddy. Ah, uh, thanks, Snooks. Now, I just put the flat iron up here, and the bucket of water goes on this side. <laughs> you get the fiendish ingenuity of it? No. Well, if an unexpected visitor, say Mr. Hopkins, walks across <laughs> this side of the porch, he gets the flat iron on his noggin. On the other hand, if he trips the rope on this side, he gets a refreshing bath of aqua pura. Who gets the hamburger? Ah, uh, I think this hamburger will interest some of the many dogs in our neighborhood. To arms, Snook! To arms! The Higgins riot again! Yeah, let's go to the dogs! Yeah, well, quit petting him. Just keep dangling that hamburger and stop nibbling on it. Can't I just have a little taste? What do you want to eat raw hamburger for? I just want to know what they see in it, that's all. Well, you'll find out when we toss it through Hopkins' front door. Come on, there's the house. Now, here's the strategy, Snooks. One of us knocks on the door, and when the door opens, the other throws the meat inside. The dogs follow the meat, and the Hopkins living room becomes a bedlam. You got it? Uh-huh. We throw the meat inside, and Hopkins living room becomes a bedroom. Uh, not a bedroom. Bedlam. What's a bedlam? Oh, never mind. Go up and knock on that door. All right. Uh, run, Snooks. Now run. Uh, here you are, Hopkins. Some groceries. <laughs> I'll bet there never was a youngster yet, including the contrary Snooks, who didn't go for the flavor of butterscotch. And when it's Jell-O butterscotch pudding, well mothers get set to serve seconds. For Jell-O butterscotch pudding has such a buttery brown sugar taste, such a rich mellow flavor, a creamy smoothness that's just plain melt-in-the-mouth goodness. It's a real old-fashioned homey flavor, but made a quick new-fashioned way. Jell-O butterscotch pudding cooks to velvety perfection in just about five minutes, and it's nourishing, made with milk, a grand dessert for the youngsters. Then there's Jell-O vanilla pudding, rich tasting and distinctive. And there's Jell-O chocolate pudding with that swell chocolatey goodness. A little hard to get these days, but a wonderful treat when you do get it. And take whatever flavor your grocer has. For all three Jell-O puddings are so good, they're just like grandma's, only more so. And now, back to Halloween in the Higgins home. Mummy is on the telephone. What's that, Mrs. Hopkins? Oh, well, that doesn't sound possible. You mean you were sitting in your living room, minding your own business, and my husband threw a pound of raw hamburger in your face? Oh, really, Mrs. Hopkins, my husband wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, it's probably just another Halloween prank. Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. You should see my house. Windows broken, the front door gone, and the... <gasps> Good heavens, Mrs. Hopkins, I've got to hang up. A strange man just staggered in here and fell unconscious at my feet. Oh, oh, give me a doctor. Who are you? I'm the doctor, the insurance doctor. Oh, you poor man. What happened? Somebody hit me with a, a flat iron. Oh, dear. Oh, here comes my husband. He'll help you. 
Hey, what's the trouble, dearest? What happened, Mommy? Oh, Lancelot, this poor man is the insurance doctor. Somebody hit him with a flat iron. A flat iron, huh? Shocking. Oh, Daddy, that must have been the iron, Daddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Snooks, why don't you run in the kitchen and get the doctor a glass of water? All right. Oh, my head. Uh, here we go, doctor. Uh, up we go, up uh, we go. Uh, Come on, uh, on your feet. Ah, uh, uh, there. How do you feel now? Oh, a little wobbly. Thanks. But I guess I'll be all right. Are you Mr. Higgins? Yes, yes. Would you prefer to skip the examination for tonight? No, no, no. As long as I'm here, I might as well get it over with. I'll get my bag. It's out in the car. Okay, fine. Oh, doctor, uh, look out for the, uh, the, the... Ah! Oh, oh, that poor man. Lancelot, who put that water bucket up there? Oh, vandals again. Daddy! Daddy! Uh, uh, get, uh, get out of the way, Snooks. I've got to drag the doctor back in. Oh, how, how do you feel, old man? Oh, my head! What's going on here? Uh, here, here. Uh, drink some water. Uh, give me that glass of water, Snooks. I didn't get it. You didn't get it. I told you to bring a glass of water for the doctor. Why didn't you get it? I was scared. What could you possibly be scared of? There's a horse in the kitchen. A horse? Yeah. Ridiculous. What would a horse be doing in the kitchen? He's eating the curtains. <laughs> Good heavens, there is a horse in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Not anymore. He's coming right here. Stand back, everybody. <laughs> Look out, doctor. Uh, the horse is going to step on you. Ah! Oh, he did step on him. Oh, the poor man. I hope he carries insurance. <laughs> He's going out oh. the front door. Are, are you all right, doctor? Here, let me help you up. Oh, what a house. Help me to my car. I want to go home. Oh, oh sure, doctor. I, I'm terribly sorry. Ah! Oh. Uh, He's out again. What hit him? A rock. Came through the window. Oh, another one, eh? And and there's a note attached to it. What does it say? It says, thanks for the dog. Here's a horse on you. Why, that dirty low Lancelot, down. what is this all about? Uh, What's going uh, on here uh, tonight? Uh, I'll, I'll explain it to you later, Vera. Uh, meanwhile, there's work to be done. Come on, Snooks. All right. What are we going to do this time, Daddy? This time we'll get him the works. It's a little trick. I learned in college called the sunken living room. It's a fiendish in its simplicity. I merely climb up the tree beside his house, and I drop the end of this garden hose down his chimney. And I turn it on? You guessed it! Snooks! Snooks? Where are you running to? I can't talk to you now, Phoebe. I gotta call the fire department. What for? My daddy stuck head first in Mr. Hopkins' chimney. He fell out of the tree. Well, what are you calling the fire department for? Well, to get him out. I don't think they'll come, Schnooks, unless there's a fire. There is a fire, all right. Mr. Hopkins is building it in his fireplace now. My, my! feeling today? Oh, that's good. No, the doctor says my daddy will be all right in a couple of days. Yeah, as soon as he gets out all the stitches. <laughs> what? Oh, I'd love to come over and go waiting in your living room. <laughs> but I can't leave the house. My daddy won't let me. I don't understand him, but he says every time he lets me out of his sight, I get into trouble. <laughs> hey, Daddy's funny. Well, Snooks has done it again. She's really wonderful, and we hope you'll be with us next week when Snooks gets going in another one of her amazing adventures. Until then, remember Jello and Jello puddings. Snooks, uh, what do you say about Jello? Just a taste of jello pudding, or of jello, and you know it's the one and only J E L L O. I like it. Today's cast in order.
order of appearance. Announcer, and Mr. Hopkins, yours truly, Constance Brenner. Baby Snooks, by the adorable Dolores Day McAllister. Mummy, and Mrs. Wilcox, by the marvelous Maureen Kingsley. Daddy, by the inimitable Gus Ludwig. Phoebe and the Doctor, by the unsinkable Molly Gaines. Ronette, by the delightful Dorothy Dandra. And our wonderful music director and sound effects by Maestro Mark McCombs. Sound engineer by the sound-sational Darnell the Ear Jenkins. Camera operator, the Eagle Eye Egidio Delu. Costumes and additional sound effects by Cass, and certainly not least, our wonderful and talented radio show director, Dolores Day McAllister. Thank you all for coming. Trip or treat. Happy, Happy Halloween, everyone. J E L L O.